We'd already traced Julia Roberts' maternal roots back to Sweden, introducing her to a host of ancestors whose names had been lost when her family moved to America. Now, turning to the paternal side of Julia's family tree, we found ourselves in southwest Georgia, exploring a name that had been lost for a very different reason. The story begins with Julia's great-grandfather, John Roberts, who grew up on a farm with his mother, a woman named Rhoda Suttle. You ever hear that name? No. Well, I want to tell you about it. Would you please turn the page? Subtle is not anything anyone's ever called anyone in my family, <laughs> by the way. This is the 1880 census for Douglas County, Georgia. Wow. There's your great-grandfather, John. You see him, right? As a child. Who's two years old. He's two here. years old, uh-huh. Living with his mother, your great-great-grandmother, Rhoda Suttles Roberts, right? Right. And three brothers. You notice anyone missing? A dad. A dad. The dad is missing. John's father, Rhoda's husband, isn't there. Have you ever heard anything about him? No. Digging into Georgia's county archives, we discovered that sometime in the 1850s, Rhoda married a man named Willis Roberts. Julia carries Willis's last name. But Willis passed away in 1864, over a decade before Rhoda gave birth to Julia's great-grandfather, John, leading to an inescapable conclusion. Julia, Willis Roberts could not possibly be your great-great-grandfather. He was dead. But, oh, wait. But am I not a Roberts? Well, let's see what we found. We scoured Douglas County looking for any record that named John's father. And we found absolutely nothing. Wow. Douglas County didn't issue birth certificates in 1878. And marriage certificates didn't name parents and names at the time. Fortunately, we had another tool. And that was DNA. Wow. Julia and one of her father's first cousins a fellow descendant of John Roberts, both agreed to take DNA tests. We then compared their results to people in publicly available databases, searching for matches, and looking to see how those matches might be connected, hoping to identify John's father through the DNA of his descendants. In the end, we found a cluster of matches that tied Julia and her cousin to one man. Henry McDonald Mitchell, Jr. You just read the name of your biological great-great-grandfather. So we're Mitchells? You're Julia Mitchell. <laughs> you are not a Roberts, biologically. Wow. That is crazy. I, I bet nobody knew. Well, everybody near that farm knew because her husband wasn't there and she was still having babies. Wow. Is my, is my head on straight still? <laughs> Am I facing you? <laughs> There's no way to tell if Rhoda ever told John the identity of his father. But we found a reason to think that she might have kept it a secret. In the 1880 census recorded when John was two, his biological father, Henry Mitchell, is living with his wife, a woman named Sarah, along with their six children. And he lived just a few miles from Rhoda. A few short miles, it would seem. <laughs> and get this, according to the same census, Henry's widowed mother, Elizabeth Mitchell, lived just four households from Rhoda. Wow. What's it like to see that? Henry was married, but his mother lived close to your <laughs> great-great-grandmother. So he would go see his mother like a good boy. Gosh. And Sarah was probably saying, oh, you're going to go see your mom? That's so sweet. <laughs> wow. What are you feeling right now, Ms. Mitch? I mean, Ms. Robert? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, on the one hand, I, truly, my mind is blown. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it is fascinating. 
And on the other hand, there's, you know, part of me that when I'm calmer, you know, can still wrap my arms around the idea that, you know, that my family is my family. Of course. And I do prefer the name Roberts. (laughs) That is your name. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's, this was a very unexpected turn, doctor. (laughs) 